Hey there guys, Miller from WorldOfTanksTutor.com here to give a short, quick breakdown on what tanks you should be using for the IS-6 challenge. If you don't know, Wargaming has given an opportunity for anyone and everyone to actually earn an IS-6 from December 15th to January 15th. Yes, earn this beautiful tank. Here are the stats, if you're not familiar, engine power is pretty good, rate of fire, not too bad, pen, a little sketch, but not horrible. Gold pen, reasonable. Accuracy, bad. Aim time, bad. Maneuverability in soft terrain, bad. View range, bad, etc. So why would you want an IS-6? Well, basically, it is the hardest core padding tank in the game, and it absolutely beasts on low tiers. It's whole armorage, 100 and 100. That's a little bit deceiving, as these sides have massive amount of slanted spaced armor. Basically, if you're against a tank with less than 170 pen, you can say lol, troll, and absolutely raffle stomp them. The IS-6 also gets preferred matchmaker, meaning it will never see anything higher than tier 9. So let's say you, you queue into a tier 6 and find, oh boy, I found a bunch of M6 and VK3601s, etc. You, my friend, are going to have a good time and give them a bad time. TLDR IS-6 is an amazing tank. Yes, you should want one. Yes, you should get one. So how can you get one? Well, you need 700,000 EXP in tier 6 is 100,000 EXP per line. Now, if you're real clever, you'll notice, hold on, we only have six lines, Millard. Well, that's true. The Japanese line will be releasing, though, and they're requiring 100,000 EXP on the Japanese tier 6. So the gist of it is, all these folks are playing tier 6s. And I'm here to help and say these are the sixes you ought to be playing. Here we go. Starting with the American line, these are the sixes that are going to be the easiest way to gain that 100k. And I'm going to share, share some tips and tricks that I myself am using in search of the 100k. Here we go. M44, nope. T21, nope. Jackson, nope. E2, nope. E8, pretty sketch. What you ought to be using is the Hellcat and M6. They share the same 90 mil. It's an amazing 90 mil, if you didn't know. Let's take a quick peek at it. Uh, rate of fire, insane, right there. 7.5, look at that gold pen. Look at that aim time and accuracy. This is a phenomenal uh, gun, regardless of what you're putting it on. And look at this, the M6 even gets a better rate of fire. It's got a 6.4 reload on that 90 with sick gold pen. That means, and no matter what game you're going to get, in these tanks you're going to hit relatively hard, 240 at least, and you can gold pen anything you could face frontally. That means you're never going to be ineffective, and your lower HP, um, in theory lower damage in some of the tanks you're going to be facing, it's not really going to be a big deal as if you maybe have the 75 from the E8, or the Jackson, which is a horrible chassis, and the same, the same gun. So, the gist of it is, on the American line, you want to be running the Hellcat and the M6. I don't recommend the E8 or the E2. E2 is simply too slow. British line. Oh boy, oh boy. Cromwell is the way to go here. Now, in most of these lines, I'm going to recommend two tanks that you play. That allows you to play one game. Your tank dies. You quick hop into another game of the same nation. That's how I recommend people grinding. I think it's better for the mentality of the grind to sort of get lots of progress immediately on one tree. Some may disagree. I do have a lot of experience power grinding, and this is what I've found to be most helpful. Anywho, Cromwell is the only one I can honestly recommend from this tree. The Churchill GC is trash. The Churchill 7 is trash. It's too slow. Tog doesn't count. They don't accept prems. Uh, FV304 is probably the closest one, honestly. I could say, hey, give it a go. The tank seems really, really fun and also quite good. The problem is it already a little more team dependent. So if you're really daring, get the 304 and get the Cromwell. Cromwell, of course, it's very maneuverable, very fast. Great way to fire. German lines. What will we be playing on the German lines? Well, I recommend people pop out the 3601. And then it gets a little shady depending on what you like. The Nashorn is a tank I've got a lot of friends who are playing and going, wow, this thing is pretty legit. It's pretty solid. Let's take a quick peek at it. Look at this 88 that a tier 6 gets. You're getting going to get over 10 rounds a minute. When you put a rammer on there, you're going to get, what, 10.25, something like that. 203 base pen. Okay, You don't need gold in this tank. It's a, it's a tier 6 with 203 pen. 
That's nuts. 237 with gold, in case you find an IS-3 or King Tiger or whatnot. And good accuracy, good aim time. The problem is going to be is that not everyone will be able to utilize a DPM TD. It's not about Alpha, the Nashorn, just rocking the 88. If you're feeling daring and like that kind of gameplay, definitely pick up a Nashorn. I don't think you're going to regret it one bit. If you're not, there's two other tanks I might recommend. It's the VK-3001. Gets a pretty reasonable 88 with gold. That's the crux. Um, oh, ages ago, it's always been like this. The 88 has an insane rate of fire and really bad pen. So if you're comfortable slinging gold, pick up one of these puppies, put a lot of gold into it in the 88, and you're just going to wreck. Same tier stuff. I mean, look at that rate of fire. Absolutely brutal. Nine rounds per minute with a rammer. And good HP. It's uh, 710 HP, I believe. Very, very solid for tier 6. If you're not comfortable firing gold, I recommend this 3002M. It gets a solid 75, 150 pen. It's enough to not require gold quite as much as the 3001. Uh, Accuracy is still good. Aim time's reasonable. Pretty good rate of fire. This is a mini Panther. A lot of folks liked the Panther. If you're looking for mini Panther, pick up the 3002M. Boom, period. There we go. French lines. Do, do, do. Arrow 44, 10 of 10. I've done a solo challenge in it. Very much like the Arl. Uh, very good tank. Never run the 90, guys. Please just don't even do it. Run the 105. Gets a actually quite good rate of fire, frankly, with uh, with Rammer. And good base pen. 165. Good cold pen. Accuracy looks bad. Aim time is bad. Accuracy is okay because of the Sigma changes, but the aim time, yeah, might screw you up a few times. The gist of it is if you're rocking a 90, your rate of fire is not that much better, frankly, and your alpha is so much worse, especially if you shoot gold in that 330. It's actually a gold alpha boost. Call that pay to win if you want. Um, the 105 is even lighter. So if you're facing a KV-1S and you trade shots, you are going to get absolutely crushed using a 90. Whereas if you're rocking the 105, maybe even 105 with gold for 330, you can actually make it a fight. I really don't recommend the 90 to anyone. That extra pseudo pen is not needed for a tier 6. So get the ARL. It's a good, good tank. Now, what else might you want to do in this line? I personally will be picking up a 12T as soon as my horrible credits gets a little bit higher. Do I recommend the 12T to everyone? No, some folks hated it. Some folks don't play lights, can't play lights. I, I just can't recommend it to, to everybody. However, if you're feeling comfortable with lights, pick it up. If not, go ahead and only get the Arl in the French tree, and we'll talk about why in a second here. Switching to the Russian lines. Oh, there's so many good tier sixes. Just ridiculous. We're seeing a lot of KV2s. I'm not sure that's a great choice. It's a very, very slow tank and can get RNG badly. Consistency is going to be rough, but hey, if you like to one-shot dirt people in your same tier, I can't really blame you. You want to pick up KV-1S and probably a T-3485, SU-100 perhaps as well. Uh, almost any of these tier 6s are going to be totally legit. Take I don't recommend, of course, is the SU-8. Uh, I don't recommend the MT-25 or the T-150. Why not the T-150, you might ask? Let's take a quick peek at it. Okay, so your rate of fire is almost what the ARLs was, 5.88. Your pen is okay. Your damage is pretty reasonable, but look at that accuracy. Trash. Aim time. Trash. The tank is slow. Uh, its armor's not really doing anything for it. So, e it's not a benefit as compared to rocking a KV-1S and SU-100. SU-100 is a tank I've played personally, even in the last few months, and it is so good. You get a 1-2-2. Two, two. Even better accuracy than the T-150, ironically. Better aim time. 175 base. It's like the KV-1S gun. And really good camo and really good maneuverability. So grab a Su-100. Grab a KV-1S if you want to be really derpy. Grab a KV-2 if you like the medium gameplay. 3485. All of those are viable choices. It's not like the American line where you only maybe have one or two or three viables. Or the French line where there's only really one. Most of these Russian tier 6s are actually quite good. Okay, flipping to the Chinese. The 5916 is a horrible tank. Please do not get it. Let's take a quick peek as to why. Whew. Look at this pen. 85 standard, which means you will not go through the sides of tanks like Pershing or um, 
that's another easy T44 you're really going to struggle with as well if you hit the tracks. That's a big issue, guys, trying to get EXP and scouts. Wargaming rewards spotting mediocrely and rewards scout damage very, very high. That's why I've got plus 1,000 EXP in most of my scouts. I'm doing damage. I think my Chaffee is like 1,200, 1,500 damage a game, and it really rewards me. Now, look at the gold pen. It's 106. This is horrible. This is trash. Don't play the 5916. You won't be able to scout. You won't be able to damage. Yuck. Don't do it, please. It's also only 380 B range. Oh boy, the Type 58. This is not a good tank. I've played it recently. It drove me nuts. Absolutely bonkers. And why is that? Well, A, I had horrible teams for the whole grind. Just uh, straight up. Okay, so your rate of fire is okay. It's not bad. It's not that great. Your accuracy is okay. Probably above average per tier. Aim time is okay. Let's look at this gold pen. Unlike the T3485, which gets 192 gold pen, 193, this caps out at 172. So if you find a tier 8 heavy frontally, you may not be able to pen them, period, depending on what angle they give you. That is not what we want as players seeking to affect the game for wins. That's also what really bothers me about this tank, is that even firing straight APCR, you're still going to get lol trolled a lot. However, the Type 58 is light years exponentially, infinitely, whatever you want to say, better than the 5960. So, get the Type 58. Say your prayers and grind through with a buddy, hopefully a full platoon. Now what you can do, and I mentioned, I was going to mention this earlier, kind of led up to it. You only have one Type 58, and you only have one Arl. Where are you? Arl. Perfect. At this point, you play a game in the Arl, and here's a pro tip for you guys. Keep your games below six minutes. If you can keep them below six minutes, you can pack ten in an hour, and then you'll have a really simple hourly rate you can calculate. I'm bringing in over 10k EXP an hour, I'm trying to keep the games below six minutes. If you can keep them below five, oh, even better. That's that's beautiful. Twelve games an hour. So one thing, if you find the game getting close to six minutes and you're not particularly being real effective. Go ahead and push hard and maybe die. Hop into a new tank. It's better than getting that 50 or 100 more EXP you might get if you stuck around for the remaining, you know, four or five minutes. Anywho, play a game in your all. Keep it less than six minutes. Boom. Die immediately. And this is where power grinding comes in, guys. Immediately hop into your Type 58. Don't stop. Don't slow down. Just boom. Hop into Type 58. Hop into Pub. Go, 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 go. Play it five to six minutes. Hop out. Hop in the Arl back and forth, back and forth. That means that there's no downtime, uh, no wasted time between these games you're playing. It's very, very important. Now, you may know that I've said absolutely nothing about the Japanese line. There's two reasons for that. I've never played the line. There's the first reason. The second reason is it doesn't really matter if the line's good or bad because you've got to play it. So my two cents here is, is bang out whichever line you've got more tanks on first. For instance, I don't have tier 6s in any line but the Americans. So I picked up my Hellcat, I picked up my M6, both tourney tanks, and I've power ground them. I'm at, what am I at? I'm at 75k in two days. Okay, so that's not too shabby at all. Something like 50, 56 games? A few more than 56, I can't remember. I've got the math somewhere. Anywho, I'm busting through the American line. At that point, I'm gonna have to buy tanks. I'm probably gonna switch into the Russian line because I think that's gonna be a pretty easy grind. Pick up a KV-1S, maybe even pick up a Su-100 again, frankly. Or <laughs> I might decide to go really derpy and get a KV-2. The end result is pick the lines that you've got the tanks in right now. Don't stress about, oh man, I need to buy a tank in every line. I've gotta do it and I'm out of credits. What am I gonna do? No. Just use the tanks you've got. If you don't have any tanks, pick a line you want to play, buy two tanks in the line, boom. It will even, in an awesome way here, if you play a line and don't want to keep the tanks, sell them and buy more sixes. Like, I need to keep my Hellcat and M6 for the tier 6 attorney stuff and occasionally my tutoring with World of Tanks Tutor.com. I can't sell them. But if I buy a KV-1S and like a KV-2, for example, I'll probably sell them and use it to buy more sixes. 
I'm one of those guys that's perpetually credit strapped because I buy and sell so much. This is part of the reason why. However, don't be afraid to sell tanks. Or if you've got tanks you don't want, just sell those too. Alright, so Chinese line, Type 58, Russian line, KV-2, 1S, T-3485, Su-100. French line, ARL, 12C if you're feeling ready for pro mode. German line, a lot of viables actually. Uh, VK-36, 3002, 3001, Nash Horn. Most of these are actually going to do a pretty reasonable job for you. Ignore the Jagdpanzer, although I think it did get a pen buff. Ooh, nope, still bad pen. Totally ignore the Jagdpanzer. British line, Rock a Cromwell. If you really, really want to, do an ATA, but I, I can't recommend that to anybody. You're going to be so ineffective in probably 30, 40% of the battles because you're too slow to get to it. And the American line, there's a couple good choices. Hellcat and M6 are going to lead the way there. All right, guys. So there is a relatively quick breakdown on what is this IS-6 contest all about, how to get an IS-6, and what tanks you should be using. If you've got other tanks you think I should have mentioned or included in here, go ahead, drop a, drop a comment here on the YouTube video. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if this was helpful, hey, give it a plus one or a share or however you want to do that. Happy grinding and good luck. Ciao.